as it is under Graham Potter this year, this calendar year, Chelsea have won one game out of eight in all competitions. I mean, for Chelsea, that's, that's not good enough, is it? No, I, I, I was saying before, and I was saying uh, I can understand it's, it's, it's difficult at the moment uh, because when you have so many players, uh, players that obviously they are young players, good young players, but still young players that they are adapting. Some of them they coming from the Norwegian league, some from the Spanish, some from the Portuguese league, and this is a different league, and they need to adapt quickly. So it's not easy. It's not easy for them, and it's not easy for the manager. But uh, unfortunately, the requirement at Chelsea is, is different. This is a, a team that has, uh, you know, been so much successful in the last 10, 15 years. So obviously, the standards, the, the requirements are different from where they were before. Do you think under the previous regime, Graham Potter would be gone by now? <laughs> Gary, this is a, a tricky question, and uh, it's very difficult to say. Obviously, we know, all know the. Uh, how they used to do things before and also they were very successful but this is a new era they are trying to establish a new a new a new mentality a new way and you know I feel for him uh, right now because I've been in that situation when I was a Watford and we had 28 players and it's not easy to coach them uh, well and create a good atmosphere um, so it's, it's at the moment uh, it's a tough job for the, for the coaches as well. Is the Chelsea squad just too big? I mean, they're going to have to bring your number 25 shirt out of retirement <laughs> at this rate. <laughs> uh, yeah, there are a lot of <laughs> shirts required at the moment. Uh, no, I think, as, again, as I repeat, it's, it's not easy also for the players because as a player, you look for confirmations. Uh, you play well, you want to be still in the team. That gives you rhythm, that gives you confidence. And uh, on the other hand, you have uh, players that they previously they play well and they, they say, OK, well, now is my turn again. So there the, have been situations in which it's not, they're not easy, difficult conversations to make, as uh, Graham said. But uh, again, it's we are not talking about a, a normal club. This is a club that in the last 10, 15 years has been so successful. So no matter how good the players that are coming are, they need to understand that they are in a very big club and uh, this is the way in big clubs, you know. You, you, you are good, you have to be good consistently because otherwise there be, will be somebody else coming in for you. It's early days. Do you have faith in Graham Potter that he can achieve things given time? Uh, Graham is a, is, a, is a very qualified coach. He's done very well uh, in different leagues, and uh, and so therefore I wish that uh, that he does well. It's a different scenario from before, uh, for sure. He knows that. We all know this, but uh, of course he, he himself will have to adapt to this the, the situation. I mean, it's it's worth uh, having faith and uh, and you know, giving time to see what uh, how this team is going to progress. You watch the game. Uh, this weekend, what do you make of uh, of some of the new the new signings? Enzo, for example, you, you impressed with him so far? I was very impressed. You know, bear in mind that uh, he left the club a player that has my utmost respect, which is Jorginho. Not only as a player, but as a as a leader, as an intelligent person, it was a big contribution. Uh, so I, I, I'm sorry to see him going, but Enzo, I have to say that I, I've made a I run an analysis before before the game and I, I was so impressed with his qualities. The speed of mind when he's you know, playing is so, in a way, reminds me Sesc Fabregas. Sesc was unbelievable in this. Before he had the ball, he knew already where the ball had to go and within seconds the ball was dispatched precisely where he wanted. And uh, he has similar qualities, but has a lot of physicality as well. So I'm impressed with him and uh, he can be really an important player for us. Uh, that's praise indeed. Yao Felix looks like he, he could live up to what we hoped he was going to be a few, a few years ago. Yeah, that is a, there's a good point because obviously nobody doubts the qualities of uh, Yao Felix. Uh, we saw what he can do. Uh, the point was whether, you know, because it's coming from the Portuguese le league first and then the Spanish league where the, football, the rhythm of the football are different. So the question was this you know, and the consistency. But the other day in the first game I saw and it was sharp. 
he was not only sharp, he was also intelligent because he was always picking up positions where he was affecting the game. And he was quick to turn and look, uh, kind of understanding with uh, Kai Abetz. And that is very important because if you want to score and create more chances, the link between the, th the front players has to be at the top. Um, Mudrick, perhaps, in contrast, maybe at, the sta at this stage struggling a bit to adapt to the Premier League? Yeah, but uh, you, uh, sometimes you need to look uh, ahead of time, you know, and uh, you have to judge what the player, not, not what the player is doing now, but what he can do. And when I look at the player, I was uh, making to myself the same question, and uh, I look at the player and I see, wow, this player can, be, can become a hell of a player. Maybe not now, because it's still, you know, getting adapt, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, sorted to, the, to, the, to, the, to this league. But you can see, you know, very good things ahead of him. The players we've mentioned there, and you, you mentioned Havertz as well, none of them are naturally in their blood and out and out number nine. Is that what Chelsea are short of? But, I mean, you can play and win things without number nine. Two years ago they won the, the Champions League and he was playing with uh, Kai, uh, he was playing also Werner and uh, another, another number ten. Sometimes Maison, sometimes somebody else, Zieck or whatever. And they were very successful. I think you can be successful also playing without strike as Manchester City teaches us a very good lesson in this sense. You know, you can win in different ways. Uh, the, the point is that, yeah, you play without strikers, but if you do that, then you have to cre create a system in which you get uh, those so good players in dangerous area where their abilities can be really, really uh, dangerous. You watch a lot of Italian football as well, obviously. Um, I think you watched Napoli over the weekend, and the, the fellow there, Ossiman. Yeah. A lot of Premier League clubs showing an interest in him, Chelsea included. Do you think he could come to Stamford Bridge and, uh, and be the missing key? Uh, he will have, they will have a lot of competition because I don't think he's only in the Premier League they're looking for him. There, there are also other big teams that they, they would like to have him. At the moment, he's a very complete player. He, he, he can play, uh, he, he's a good reference going forward. He, he can do some link-up play uh, and he's devastating in, in the space, in the air. Uh, so. He, in the Italian league, he's totally dominating it. And also, he's a pest for the defender. <laughs> I saw the other day. He's really, he's really, he's, he's got a, an amazing energy. I don't know. Obviously, I don't know what is going to happen because Napoli, if they go and win the league uh, and they do well in the Champions League, they will want to keep him. Uh, a lot of will depend uh, on his um, desire. Um, so, we will see. Although I think uh, the task in, 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 you know, in, in the Premier League was different from the Italian one. Jesse Mourinho gave Ossiman high praise indeed. He said he liked him to Didier Drogba, but Didier Drogba didn't dive as much. <laughs> because he was too strong to <laughs> die, uh, dive, uh, Didier. Now there are a lot of similarities. They play the position with a lot of physicality, but also they're very good in, the, in scoring, uh, taking opportunities, head. Uh, in the space, so they can protect the ball and link up for the other. So I, I see a lot of uh, similarities in uh, in the two players. Although I mean, it's so unfair to, to you know compare to be two players from different areas, and uh, but they, you know it comes close.